This is the third episode of Comparing Dante's Inferno, and I'm not going to waste any time. Last time, we saw Dante come home to find his father and wife Beatrice dead. Her soul was then kidnapped by Satan, and Dante went to hell to get her back. He met Virgil, who was sent by Beatrice to guide him. We visited the vestibule of indecisiveness, then crossed the river Acheron, where we killed Karen. Arriving at Limbo, we did a little more killing, and are now on our way to meet King Minos. In the comedy, King Minos is described as a bestial man with a tail. He is the judge of sins, and to announce which circle of hell you go to, he wraps his tail around himself a set number of times. Twice for lust, for example. When Dante meets King Minos, Virgil basically tells Minos to shut up and mind his own business. Then they leave without another word towards the storm of lust. <laughs> King Richard wants us to babysit 3,000 prisoners? That is the King's command? He intends to negotiate the exchange of these prisoners for the return of the True Cross. Negotiate with heretics? I can comfort you if you let my brother go. I have a woman in Florence. In Florence. Dante, don't. Let me comfort you. They immediately enter the Circle of Lust, where a storm constantly whirls the sinners about. Dante speaks to Francesca da Rimini and Paolo. Francesca appears in the game as an optional soul to punish or absolve. Ah! Be damned, sinner! The second circle of hell is a furious storm that blinds one to reason and denies comfort like a sinner's lust once had in life. This is represented in this level by the lust tornado and the statues denied the comfort of the one across from them. You will also notice I'm not censoring the breasts on Cleopatra. This is because they are, in fact, tiny toothless mouths, an artistic choice not present in the comedy. Another artistic choice will be the phallic architecture. Beatrice. Wait! 
To this circle was judged Semiramis, queen of Assyria, empress of many tongues. Her passion ruled her and her kingdom. A clever man, but you'll never reach them in time. So instead of the two bosses of this level being Francesca and Boilo, it is Cleopatra and Mark Antony who lived in debauchery for their entire time together. Cleopatra is only mentioned for one line in this canto of the comedy among over a thousand shades in this circle. Beatrice, don't do this. Because of you, I must. I would never do anything to cause this. Oh, but you did cause this. Let me refresh your memory. Look into your beloved's eyes, Dante. Look. Dante. Look. Beatrice, what have I done? Do we have an arrangement? I'm no brute. Guards, release this one. And her brother. You broke your promise. You don't know what it was like. But she does know what it was like. I showed her. Beatrice, don't. I have no choice. So your girl left you for Lucifer? My faults are mine! But she doesn't deserve this! I have to set things right! Give up the little bitch, Dante. Once this dirty business is complete, and Lucifer's way home is reopened, her part in this play will seem so small. I don't understand. Of course you don't. You just gave up the keys to the kingdom. And for what? The tits of a slave girl. Damn you! Too late for that. And now to give Lucifer the time he needs. Mistress, let me have him. As you wish, Antony. Looking into Beatrice's eyes are actually a strong theme of the third volume of the Divine Comedy, which is when Dante is led by Beatrice instead of Virgil. It wasn't supposed to end like this. We had a deal.
In this circle is the once beautiful Helen, around whom so many years of war and suffering revolved. Virgil mentions Helen in passing. Helen actually has three lines in the comedy, whereas Cleopatra only has one. For the ruinous fault of gluttony are these sad souls broken by the rain and the mud. In Gluttony, the third circle, Dante sees that the shades are covered in mud and assaulted by cold, gross weather like rain, snow, and hail. Then they approach Cerberus. Cerberus is described as a three-headed, dog-like creature with gross, slobbery beards. He is slimy and has a body like a twitching mass of muscles. He mangles and rips at the sinners of this circle. <laughs> Virgil pacifies the Cerberus by throwing piles of muck down its throat instead of cutting off or blowing up its heads. Dante meets a friend who prophesizes about political future, and as the two poets leave, Dante questions Virgil about the Last Judgment. Not much else is said about the Circle of Gluttony. What these shades could not satisfy in life, in death they shall be denied for eternity. Bishop assured us that our sins would be absolved. And you believed him. You actually believed these salesmen of salvation. And what of those lost souls that we killed? Where are they? They thought their cause was holy too. Where are they? Why do I not find them damned in the inferno? Because this isn't their hell. It's yours. Don't waste your tears, girl. Knowing my son, he's long dead by now. Uh. <laughs> you dare enter my home! Stop him! Behold the slaughter and rule of your family. 
of your home, of your way of life. Oh. How does it feel when it's your own? That's it for this episode. Next time there's even more game plot and we enter the circle of greed. Thanks for watching.